Hi there. Uh, it's another Sunday and um, it's it's another day. Uh, it's another evening with The Way Show. My name is Wally and um, yes, like I said, it's another Sunday. It's, uh, it's a beautiful day here uh, in, in the east of London where we're broadcasting from live uh, on YouTube Live. Um, it's The Way Show and uh, my colleague Yomi is behind um, um, all the technical duties um, concerning this show for today. And today it uh, promises to be very explosive. And um, today in the advert, if you have seen it, Olympians are assembling um, on the way show. So we've got um, someone very special who we're kicking off with today. Um, a very um, talented person, um, fun to talk to, um, who is well known, not just in Nigeria and Africa, and indeed in the, uh, the Olympic Committee of Nation. Um, his name is Chika, Chika Meriji. Uh, Chika is our first guest for today. Chika, it's so nice to see you again. Um, it's nice to see you smile again, to see your smile again. I wasn't I smiling before. <laughs> you were always, you're always smiling, that's the thing, because it's been a while since I saw you smile live. You know, yeah, so that's why yeah, I said so. So it's, it's, it's good to see you again, Chika. Thanks I, for coming I, to the I, show. I guess I'm on the way show, so of course I'm, it's a pleasure to be on your show. And Thank first you. of all, of course, I have to commend you guys. This, this is innovative, you know. In the wake of all the COVID and all that, you know, people want to engage, they want mm -hmm. to talk, they want to discuss because human beings are social. So yeah. I'm very happy to share my experiences and have a very um, interesting conversation with you this evening. Thank you so much, Chika. Thank you. It's so nice to have you on the show. So, Chika, um. Has, has it been for you, especially during this um, special time we've got? I don't want to call it a, a some other words, some other negative words, because uh, it's a special time. Uh, there have been losses, sadly, of human lives, but um, um, it's, it's it's special also. So, how have you been uh, so far with you during COVID nineteen? I mean, I'm I'm sad that the world slowed down, obviously, mm -hmm. because as you said, many people lost their lives. Yes. And there was a disruption in people's lives, especially financially. So people couldn't mm -hmm. end. And you actually feel it because you get more requests for help. You yeah. know, you yourself, you are uh, on the edge, you know. Mm -hmm. But I use this time very productively. I'm very happy mm -hmm. because if you know my routine prior to the lockdown, I never had any rest. You know, I was always mm -hmm. trying to think of a Taekwondo program, trying to make sure that things were moving. I was always traveling up and down. They actually give me time to rest, mm -hmm. think, to reflect, and to do some things I love doing, you know? Mm -hmm. I learned how to pick a few things. I used to cook. You know, I, I started cooking again. I used to cook, like when I, was, when I was living in Manchester, you know, I loved cooking and all that. And most importantly, I I started up my garden, you know, because after <laughs> yeah. like six, seven weeks at home, I said, look, you have space. Why not just plant a few crops, you know? So, and uh, some of my students were around, so we talked about it and we decided to plant, and we planted a lot. We mm. planted Ubu, we planted tomatoes, okra, uh, we planted maize, you know, planted yam, cocoa yam, uh, turmeric, in total 12 crops, you know. Wow, so, so the trip like, to the market is limited now. I I, I don't <laughs> know I'm any vegetable. When I want to cook, I'll just go to the backyard, I'll get <laughs> the leaves, and we'll make correct soup for stew, so... I, and what does the cooking? What does the cooking of the ugus and, and and the vegetables yourself? You know, I mean, from secondary, you just find out that you know at that time you couldn't cook. You're just walking up nonsense. But as yeah. time went by, you know, I got better. You know, because I really, really enjoyed it. You know, mm. so if not that the Olympics was heavy on my routine, so you always had to train mm. and. Uh, of course, with the Federation, it's serious business. So you didn't have time to do things like that, you know? So I brushed up my language books, you know? Because last year, I actually started learning Chinese. 
you know? Wow. And yeah, and it's it's quite nice. Ni hao, ni hao. Ah, ni hao ma. Ah, ni hao. That's good. Well done. So it's actually quite interesting what the amount of things you can do when you have uh, the time to do them and mm-hmm. start appreciating life a bit more, you know? Exactly. So um, it's very, very interesting to see how the world will change when finally mm-hmm. all the restrictions will be lifted up, you know? Are we mm-hmm. going to go back to our busy lives where you don't have time to call those you love? Mm-hmm. And in this period, I've talked a lot to my mom. Before, you, you know, you're very busy. You know, you, you want yeah. to check up, you can't. You mm-hmm. have friends you want to see, you can't. Mm-hmm. But when you are locked up in the house, you can re- take out your phone, you can call people, you know, you can reach out to people because now people need it. People need to hear that it's going to be okay. Yeah. And it's very depressing to just stay at home. You can't go out and have a drink with your friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't go to the cinema. You can't just little things that uh, before we took for granted. Now we appreciate it more. Mm-hmm. And indeed, what I call it is a very special time we are now. And thank you for that insight. And obviously, that that other side of you, because uh, I never I, I never thought a chica would be a, someone very versed in, in farming. So you're starting on a small scale. Hopefully, in the next five, 10 years, you'll be on a large scale and probably a very well wealthy uh, farmer that we can, that we now decide to start exporting to, to other parts of the country or the, or the, or, or the world. I can I can tell you straight up. Now, mm-hmm. if I am probably I don't I don't know how long I'll be with Taekwondo, you know, because I've given of course I started when I was three years old, but since two thousand when I started again, that's twenty years, you know, it's a long time. It is but certainly as the years go in a few years, I'm gonna basically uh reduce my taekwondo activities and Definitely, I love what I'm seeing from farming. I don't know about exporting and importing and all that, <laughs> but there's a certain joy that, you know, if I want to mm-hmm. eat fish, now I can go to the back and get fish to it. And if mm-hmm. I want to make a soup, you know, I can get it from my garden. And it's actually quite uh, therapeutic. And mm-hmm. it's not like I knew how to farm. You know, I just watched YouTube videos. Everything was from seed. So there was something about you know, building the ridges, digging a hole, putting the seed, and diligently watering it and giving it life. So uh, it gave me the same feeling, like my foundation, what I do with uh, my my students, the one I mentor, where when you first meet them, you know, they don't know anything about the computer or uh, they don't know uh, what pe- young people should know, how to use the system, how to use software. And you start from scratch, go taekwondo and the computer system, and you groom them. So it's the same thing. So when you give life to something, it's actually mm-hmm. very, very fulfilling. And so I'm very glad that I had uh, this farming experience just because of the lockdown. So I'm grateful. For- that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful because uh, no, no, not a lot of people will probably know that other side to Chica. And uh, well, it's it's. Uh, it's uh, an exclusive to us here on the way show which is really very good so chica let's go to your first love hello chica can you hear me i think there's been um i don't know we're trying to re-establish contact with chica it's pro- probably problem with the signal um from here to all the way to nigeria so uh chica should be able to join us pretty much soon again um so uh, i i think the organization is fantastic uh they're using the latest system uh everywhere looks really nice really colorful so it's a good promotion for the sports and i think the participants the young people and the coaches they're having a great time so there's music there's dance and there's fight so i think it's a very good uh, organization so we're grateful to the issf and we're grateful to the Morocco government. They've been very good hosts for uh, supporting this opportunity.
for the Nigeria Taekwondo athletes to be here in Morocco for the games, which is very good for school uh, sports. There were a lot of new rules in Taekwondo, and for the older ones, it was more difficult to change to the new rules. But for these young ones, you can see they've taken to the rules like fish to water. We don't put pressure on them to maybe win medals or anything. So I advise them to make a lot of friendships with other young people and to experience the whole uh, atmosphere. Nothing comes easy. They have to work hard and they have to be young. To be young means to live a lot, to try a lot. And when you make a lot of uh, mistakes, you, it's okay because it's a learning uh, point. So that was Chica. Um, that, that interview was actually done in Morocco when um, the Nigerian team, when he led, obviously led the Nigerian team to um, uh, qualifiers in, in Morocco. Um, Chica, we're open to a, a re-established contact with him again, so we can continue our discussion. Already very interesting. Uh, we've learned a, a little bit about um, what Chica is up to. Uh, especially now during the lockdown, so we've already we already know Chica. It, it's uh, he's a an Olympian, uh, a bronze medalist at the Olympics, um, a top 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 player in his uh, in his sport, and not just a top player, but a top ambassador for the game of uh, taekwondo for the sport of taekwondo, uh, not just in Nigeria, in Africa, and indeed the world. I mean, there's been so much massive support for um, taekwondo since you know. Um, Chica broke that dock uh, and became um, uh, a sensation in the sport. So there's been so much support uh, in and out of Africa, in South Korea, in, 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 in the northern part of Africa, everywhere there's been outpour of support for the game of Taekwondo in Nigeria. So we've learned something. We've learned that um, he, he's, got, he's got a dream. He's already planning for life af outside Taekwondo. Uh, he's, he's already started his own farming, uh, no matter that he's small back in his backyard in Nigeria. But he's looking forward to um, making it big, you know, um, as a part of, um, like he, he, he put it, um, apart from being therapeutic, uh, um, it's also um, a way of giving back to Nigerians. To Nigerians. And he's also been supporting youngsters in, in the um, act of taekwondo and also uh, with IT um, and it's, it's really really interesting and we hope uh, Chica can also uh, rejoin us once we've re-established the contact that we lost uh, we, we will continue the interesting uh, topic uh, talking about what's been happening to him um, and in taekwondo and obviously for the rest of his um, future career. So it's, it's The Way Show. My name is Wally and it's uh, another Sunday night. Um, um, just briefly, a uh, few news coming out. Uh, Chelsea today uh, beat my United 3-1 at Wembley uh, to qualify for the final of the Emirates FA Cup in England. So Chelsea will be playing Arsenal, uh, who defeated uh, Man City yesterday at the same Wembley. So at the game final of the Emirates FA Cup is going to be on the 1st of August this year, so that's about a few weeks from now. So it would be a special occasion, uh, not just because it's the Emirates FA Cup, but it's going to be involving two London teams, one from the West or Southwest, uh, well, the West or Southwest, and, and the other one from the North of London, two very big teams you know, defeating two very big teams from Manchester. Uh, it's, that's, it's, it's a big one because uh, at the beginning of the, um, when the draws was made for the semi-finals, not a lot of people um, thought that the two uh, giants from London would be uh, playing themselves in the final of probably the biggest cup, um, um, cup game, every cup game ever in the world. So, uh, the, whatever way you look at it, the FA Cup is going to stay in London uh, this year because uh, it's, it's either it goes to the north or uh, the west down Fulham Road. Um, so whatever way we say, we will we will um, we know the cup is staying in London. So uh, we, we we wish the two teams the very best of luck. Uh, the Premier League is still ongoing, and. Um, Chelsea obviously is still fighting to get into the top four. Leicester uh, 
busted, um, you know, just, you know, uh, lost a bit of uh, leeway today. And um, after they, uh, they lost to um, Spurs, Tot uh, Tottenham or Spurs, at the uh, Tottenham Stadium uh, today. So Mourinho is uh, continuing his dominance over uh, his uh, protege, uh, Brenda, uh, you know. So um, that's of Leicester. So that's, that's just a bit of football, um, you know, while we established contacts with Chica. Chica is back with us now. Thank you for uh, joining us, rejoining us, Chica. So just um, rounding off on what happened in football just um, a few yesterday and today. And uh, again, um, um, so we, we, we're just going back from where I picked up from. So I said, we, we just saw a clip, uh, an interview you had in Morocco uh, when you were talking about uh, a Nigerian youth going to Morocco uh, for a competition and they did well. And you, you mentioned something there that youths need to be what they are, youths. You need to enjoy the time as a youth, you know, uh, which was a very strong message because We've heard so many talks, um, so many negative talks about, about Nigerian youths nowadays. I mean, right from when when the president said Nigerian youths were lazy and what have you. Uh, but as as in 2008, as a as as a young person yourself, you know, no one really knew outside outside the shores of Nigeria who Chica was, but you went there. You made your country proud, you made Africa proud, you made your name proud, you know, and you made yourself proud. How was that feeling that time? I mean, relieving that time, how, how was it for you? I mean, we, we saw it on TV, obviously, but we didn't know what you felt inside. So what was it, what was it feeling like, one, being an Olympian and also being a medalist? I mean, in retrospect, when I look back, of course, I'm grateful for the medal. Um, at the time, I was actually very upset because I honestly thought I would win the goal and this was what mm -hmm. was me. But when you look back, you now find out that in a world that has billions of people, few people make it to the Olympics. Yes. And in Nigeria, 200 million strong, you know, and still just a few of us make it to the Olympics. So, mm -hmm. so far, I think we've just had about 104 Olympians, Olympic medalists, sorry. And you are just grateful that you put in a lot of hard work, just like they did. And you're grateful that, okay, you can say, um, point to a medal and say, okay, you won a medal. And of course, I went to three Olympics. What really made it difficult for me is that when I look back, you realize how alone you were. You know, you didn't have the technical support or the tactical support. And having been to so many countries and seen the system i really applaud nigerian athletes anybody you see on top really trust me um they did a whole lot to get there you know and you have to applaud them because i i really see them as superheroes really um once a system where from the grassroots you're supported i don't see why our sports men and women can't start earning from when they are at the grassroots level. You know? And so I think our sports structure is very flawed. Um, we have the potential to run a multi-billion dollar system, sporting system I introduced in Nigeria, but we've not gotten that right. So we lose opportunity year by year to provide jobs through sports to people. In addition to what sports does, you know, the social economic implications of sports or tourism or just changing the life of people around you know i mean we're just talking about it now like for example with my youth teams i never push them to win medals you know we keep putting a cost to medals oh this sport how many medals do they bring and stuff i mean i'm not even going to go into the fact that you didn't even invest in their preparation from mm -hmm. the beginning. You no, know, you didn't build their confidence. You didn't expose them to the tournaments. You didn't keep them. You know, you didn't make them, make them feel loved and super. You didn't give them monthly allowances. And when the major tournament comes, we put so much pressure on them. So I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about when it comes to 
youth sports, cadets, kiddies, juniors. I don't think the goal should be medals. I think we should just allow them to grow and be young, you know. And I find out that just by giving them liberty, so we youth teams, this is what I do. Of course, you train them hard, you make sure they are disciplined, but you give them the liberty to be young because that's what it's all about. You now find out that once you train them with liberty, with love, with a lot of discipline, you know, that they actually give you the results rather than make it the sole objective, you know. So my experience from Beijing, when I look back, it was traumatic, from Athens to Beijing to London, because I was always alone, always training alone, always trying to be the coach, the manager, the everything. So I'm very happy that, you know, I had a supportive uh, father, mother, uh, siblings. I had people like uh, Patrick Ikeji, not people like Alas and Yakmu that looked at the program. So some key things uh, fell into play. But, you know, each, every step of the way, I knew that um, destiny was in my hands. Let me put it this way. So I was not looking for applause from the crowd. I was not looking for applause from people. This is just what I wanted. I, I loved I wanted to be at the Olympics in 2000. I said I was going to be at the Olympics. I was going to be at three Olympics. And, you know, I got to do it. And I'm grateful to, to God for life. Because mm. a lot of people say, I'm going to be at the Olympics. They are good enough, but they don't make it, you know. Mm. So mm. I'm very um, grateful for everybody that helped me on that on that journey. And, and this is why when now... I'm in the Federation. Um, I mean, you don't give the Federation any kind of funding. Let me even start with that. <laughs> so, but you expect them to deliver. I mean, I don't have any problem, but I really don't want, to the best of my ability, people that came after me to go through what I did. So, like, if you come to my training camps, I drive them very hard. Because I know that when the competition comes, it's going to help them, you know. Uh, if we're having meetings with the board, thankfully, the Federation has a president that is on point. She's a two-time African champion, Margaret Elizabeth Binga. Uh, she was my captain when I first got to the national team in 2003. So when we sit down as a board, there are other people also on the board that were core champions, like the technical chairman, uh, Alaji Sani. He was a three-time university champion, two-time national champion. We have uh, Tony Anaflu, a seven-time champion. We have uh, the former president, Naji. So there are people like that. So when we sit on the board, we make sure that the, the number one question is that this decision we're making, how does it affect the athletes? it must impact them positively. And when you start from there, you find out that your decisions will always be on point, you know? So I guess I've I've, I've, I've derailed a bit from your question, yeah? Yeah, because I was I was actually going to... What you're just explaining to me now is, is... I've had quite a lot of people come on this program and I've asked them questions, these questions. I've had footballers, coaches, athletes, you know, come on to, to, to um, even federations like the, the Nigerian Calling Federation. And they just made a comment about what you're just talking about now, that when we have the right people in the right places, now you're not doing your friends a favour, you know, and you've got the, the mentality to I think that, you know, I am dealing with human beings, um, you know, I am dealing with, we, I'm not putting pressure on people unduly, even because obviously I've not invested in them. I mean, all we know as a country in Nigeria is when, when Nigeria f um, football team is playing any team, um, prior to that, you don't hear nothing. But if they have qualified for, say, Nations Cup or the World Cup, then you hear government budgeting billions. And at the end of the day, it don't work out well. It's to go back to the same story. Oh, we should have won this competition. Oh, the reason why we didn't win this, why we didn't win this competition is probably because 
um, corruption or what have you, you know. And the other thing is other uh, small sports, permit me to use that word small, um, sports that, for example, you can't say Taekwondo is a small sport in South Korea. You can't say that, you know. But people seem to, especially the Nigerian government, seem to believe, you know what, it's just one person representing us, you know. Forgetting that that one person can change the outlook of a country, you know, internationally, just like he did in 2008. You won, you won, I mean, on the podium, the Nigerian anthem was sung, yeah? It wasn't Chukumiriji's anthem. It, was, it wasn't Chika's anthem. It was a Nigerian anthem, and you were representing that country with the Nigerian flag there. So it, it's, it, it's painful when people like you come on shows like this and tell us about the struggles you had to make, you know, and you were beating people that, you know, had so much invested in them, investment in them, but you with zero investment, see, so went out there with your talent, with your zeal, with your, uh, um, you know, with your background to just go there and just do it for the love of the country. I mean, it's, um, and that's one of the reasons why we bring people like you in, you know, to celebrate you and also to let you, to let us know what you are doing in your stead as a Federation member to make sure people coming under you, after you, don't experience what you uh, you experienced in the past. Okay. Uh, well, let, let me respond a bit to you. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, um, it's progressive to look back. I don't look back and say we should have done this, done that, or done that. Well, we can look I, back to pick up to pick up things to learn of from. Course, of course, yeah. the, the past is what as there's a saying that the past is what it, it makes us who we are. You know, yeah. we must never make it our burden. I'm not burdened mm -hmm. by the past. Mm -hmm. I don't have regrets. Now I know that I'm a natural athlete, so probably with if I was maybe a German or American or in in a environment that really develops, probably I will have won a couple of world titles because truly I'm a natural athlete. Mm. But I don't look at that and regret, no. This is our holding to bear. Why are we looking for right people? I say that I am the right person for Taekwondo. Why are good people shy of saying that I'm capable? I remember during the elections, things got dirty, you know, they threw a lot of mud and all that. I rolled mm -hmm. up my sleeves. I said, well, if that's the way you want to run, let's go. <laughs> Look, 30 years ago, good people started leaving the country. They said, oh, Nigeria is, is hard to leave. So you people started going to UK and going to Canada <laughs> and going to all these places. <laughs> and the ones you tag as bad and corrupt states. And the drain continued over decades. Now, we find that most of the people who say that they can change things and change the world, they are not in Nigeria. So look at all the social media. The most vicious of critics, the most vocal of critics, they are not here. And when you are not in the plane, you can't change it. And I remember when I finished my master's, I was in UK or two or three years, I came back, you know. So is it convenient to be in the Federation? It's not. I probably will make a very good living outside of the Federation, doing what I do very well. But you stay, because this time a good person leaves, it becomes worse for the people mm -hmm. coming up. And what the good people must do, and I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell sportsmen, up front now. Go into politics if you want to. That's where laws are made. That's where you can make impact. You know, improve yourselves if you need to get degrees and all that. That's important. You know, build your networks, go to your grassroots, stay in touch. Because the people who you feel should not be in charge, that's what they, they do and that's what they are still doing. So I don't think good people quote-unquote, should just hold their hands and say, well, I'm very qualified. 
If they see me, they should use me. If not, let everything go to hell. It's your country too. So get in there and make things work. So now I'm in the Federation. Wow. I, I speak with Madam President. I speak with the board. We feel okay. There's no database. We're getting it done. We feel okay. Um, we don't uh, have a club management system. We're building it. We're getting it done. We didn't have a constitution since 1987. So you wonder what every other federation were doing. <laughs> Everybody did to their limit. You don't blame. Now you you came, you said you can make a difference. You make a difference. You do what you can do to the extent you can do it. And um, you leave the place in, in better shape. So good people must show what the difference is. So we must talk. We must not just talk, we must walk the talk, so to speak. I'll, I'll give you an example. Elizabeth just qualified for the Olympics. And funny enough, she's my direct student. And people don't know how it happened, but I'll tell you how it happened. What happened was, in, in of course, in, since 2010, I've been running a foundation. So every year, I used to do workshops, bring national... Uh, champions together and you know basically share my experiences with them. Then in 2014, I decided to form a team. So I signed a partnership deal with the uh, FCT Education Board. So they allocated four schools to me, and steadily I used to go to two or three schools every week. You know, I didn't say, "Oh, I'm an Olympian." No, you know, pay me to do it or stuff. I realized that this is your way of giving back. So every week I used to go. So throughout the year, at least 500 students used to pass through. And I just selected a few. And from 2015, I started training them. And Elizabeth is one of them. So you feed, you train every day because I have walked the path. So when you say, I've been to the Olympic three times. What you don't know is that for Beijing and for London, I wrote my own program. So I've walked the path. So it was easy to build her step by step by step and step and all of them. And now she has qualified for the Olympics. So in 2015, I told her your target is to be at Tokyo 2020 Olympic. And she was wondering how we'll do it. I said, well, we're going to train for the first two years. They are going to start competing in 2017. And that's when she started competing. So she has competed for only three years. And she's going to be an Olympian. So what I feel is um, there's so much we should do and can do. One, our human resources, all the champions we have. I don't know of any Olympian that feels valued. I do not know of any Olympian that feels valued. We need to in Nigeria, up. not the world. In Nigeria. Okay. In Nigeria. We need to bring them. We need to appreciate them. If you need to give them houses and land, please do. If they need to be retrained, we retrain them so that we can actively push them to inspire the next generation or to train them. Who wants to be coaches, sports admin? There's something different about, for example, when I was with the national team at the All African Games, I, I, I'm already an African champion. It's just like Daniel Legali. If Daniel Legali is talking to his students, when they look at him, they are seeing someone who has won the African Games? Who has won the Olympics? Look at Zidane and Real Madrid. So sometimes, the person mentoring, if you've been at the highest level, you have an extra edge. You bring something extra to the table. And that's why I said we have to engage that critical uh, group of people, the Olympians, to try and turn around the sporting industry. That's one. Two, so, I will beg to differ, you know, they say, like, of course, you just showed me a comment where Coiling said the government should hands off sport. I, I, sorry, but I do not agree. I, what I think is everybody needs to play their parts. For instance, 
um, the federations. Taekwondo is not a small sport. I'm not going to say it's a small sport because in my yes. head, the vision is that big. Mm -hmm. You might not see it, but I see what the potential can be. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. The global membership system, we made it free between last month and August. We've run this system for two and a half years, and there were just 400 people in the system. But we just made it free, and in the past 10 days, about 3,000 people have signed up. And Globally, two, worldwide? No, 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 just in Nigeria. Oh, just in Nigeria, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Just in Nigeria. Wow. What am I trying to say? We have the potential to actually make each federation good. What does football do? They've got a good fan base. You see a one-year-old, you see a two-year-old, they're already kicking a ball around. Uh, we look at the superstars, we know their favorite colors, we know what they drive, we know their stories. They are actively active. I mean, just can you imagine how boring some of the current matches look playing football in an empty stadium? Yep. So what actually makes it very interesting is the fan base, the commentary. Look at the NBA in the US. It's not the actual game on the court. It's what surrounds it. The stories in between. Yeah. The rivalries that are stepped up, you know? So, federations need to build a solid team. You know, when you, when you talk to most federations, what they tell you is, we want to develop coaches. You know, coaches, coaches, referees. What of sport administrators? People that will make sure that you don't miss your flights, that you register on time. What of sport marketers? People that will go out there with your programs and make your sport more popular. You know? What of operation managers? They are creative with programs. They can help you design programs. And when you design a taekwondo program, you will be thinking, okay, if we're going to have a program, how can I fill this all? Maybe should we do a raffle draw? Should I sell popcorn and ice cream outside? Um, we'll talk about media. How many federations have done media training so that journalists can know how to report your sports? How many federations groom athletes on how to engage with media because most athletes shy away from the media. So if you talk about football, oh, we have JJ, we have Kano, we have, you know, we can call so many different names that people can identify with. Mm -hmm. So I used to say, if you say Taekwondo in Nigeria and only Chika comes to your head, then as a federation, we're failing. So people should start knowing who Elizabeth is that just qualified for the Olympics. Who is Benjamin Nkomo said the current heavyweight, you know? Who is Sunday on Fair? His nickname is the Bull. Then they'll say, ah, why do they call him the Bull? He has power. That in fact, when Sunday meets Benjamin, you know, there will be fireworks. You drum it up. So you make it entertaining. And you say, okay, when you come, you know, you, you put other things that will make your events very lively. Mm -hmm. Sports is a business. It's entertainment. It's, so it's not just about winning medals at the Olympics and at the Commonwealth Games. So when federations start being truly independent, we can generate our own funds. Truly, then that's when sports will begin to develop. Because when you have a lot of funds, okay, let's go to the grassroots. You realize that grassroots is a key. We have the numbers there. You know, how do we get all these guys on our database? We have 1 million people. Okay, they're going to pay 10 naira a year to affiliate to the federation. Okay, if we have 1 million times 10, that's 10 million at the start of the year, then you're, you're, you're starting to talk. And people won't pay to affiliate to you if you have nothing to offer to them, you know? So the conversation is so vast, you know? I, I can explain so many things we did as a fed. Like, for example, we never had a website. Now we have a very good website. It's being updated, we, you know, we're trying to engage. If I were trying to get Taekwondo practitioners to be our content providers, because I sat down and I said, look, you might be best friends with 
NTA channels, AIT, all the major newspapers, Nation, uh, Guardian, Sun, Punch. name them, Punch, Blueprint. But would they write about you every day? No, because no. they have a lot of content. What if you have your own platform? Now on our platform, every week we have Taekwondo stories. If people have weddings, if they have uh, funerals, they are our people. We tell their story. Nobody should tell you a story. You should write your own story. And when Federation start thinking like that, you know, the honorable ministers will come and go. Directors will come and go. But if you've done a sport, you're in the sport. You enjoy the sport. You are there to stay. So together, you should build a home that accommodates everybody in the sport. To make decisions that grows the sport. You know? So we could talk about it on and on and on, but I'm I'm not negative. I'm hopeful for the future. I can say I have something to contribute to Taekwondo to the sports family. Categorically say I'm very equipped. There's nothing wrong in saying it. If you're equipped to do it, you help out where you can. If you're in a position of leadership, make the right decisions. Surround yourself with people. Um, they, I mean, you don't have to even be, you don't have to be in agreement with them, but they are, they are positive, they are creative, they can bring solutions, you know, for each problem. If you are a follower, maybe you're not in leadership position, don't fold your hand and say, well, I'm not in power, therefore I'm not going to be involved. You build the house, that's how it is. And you say, okay, I'm going to do my part for the next five years, 10 years, and somebody else should take over. And having said that, I remember a lot of young Taekwondo people, they call me and I tell them, look, I think you guys should start getting ready to take over the Federation. And they said, wow, no, you have to come back. You have to be here for the next 10 years, 15 years. And I said, I went for three Olympics and that's right. Before Rio Olympics, I was the top ranking Taekwondo athlete in the country. I could easily have gone to qualify and I knew I would have. But I said I've been for three Olympics. I really pushed, I wanted a gold medal, but I didn't. Many people have never even qualified. And I invested my time in trying to get the next generation now, even though they didn't qualify that year, at least they are grateful that they had the opportunity to try. Honestly, it's very hard to live when you're on top. But we need the top athletes, the top administration to start mentoring the next generation to take over. So if you're a top athlete, and there's someone that is 16 year old, 17 year old, start pouring your experiences into that person. Oh, I made this mistake. I made that mistake. Don't do that. It shortens their time to the top. If you're a top administrator, stop trying to get all the power for yourself. Start grooming people and showing them the ropes, you know. Internationally, we need to start getting to the international federations, whether it's as referees, coaches, politics. So, that's why I said the conversation is so big. In my head, it's so clear, the various compartments and what we need to do. But really, we have a long way to go. And until we can put a solid structure that is not dependent on just the government, until we can raise and train people. I, I'm not good as I'm not just the technical director because I went for three Olympics, you know, there's experience. Okay, I studied, I actually studied operation management in school, operation management and supply chain. So if I'm approaching things, there's a structured way um, I want to make sure we achieve objectives. You know, so getting people, if people are not educated in your sport, you plan for it. Start getting them scholarships so that in 10 years, they finish secondary school, you know, they finish university, you look for jobs for them. 
that's how to grow a sport, to think about it in decades. So hopefully the work being done now, which maybe can feel the impact in 15 years, it doesn't matter. You don't have to develop it today so that you can reap the benefits today. So um, I guess that's just my general philosophy about this. I thank you for this philosophy, you know, because, uh, like I said, with um, uh, on this show, we've 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 um, had a few people come in, administrators, journalists, key actors, sportsmen, and women like you are that are now stepping into administration of sports, and they, they you all agree on one thing: we need to be with our structure. We need to have a a a fun, well, we already have a foundation. Because I don't want to believe we do not have a foundation. If we do not have a foundation, then we won't have an, all these associations. Because the associations, as far as I'm concerned, are the foundation. The issue is building a sound structure on this foundation. You've spoken so much uh, about your plans for Taekwondo, and I'm so glad you have um, a board that is filled with, you know, people that know this sport. How many of our Nigerian associations? are filled with your type of people. So that's the issue. You know, I know you said about people coming back, well, the good people coming back to, you know, and and contribute to the society. But then you look at why are these good people not really deciding to come back? Why do Nigerian athletes, you know, they, they, they come out from the system in Nigeria, they are raised within our educational system in Nigeria, then they go for one tournament and they feel so bad because they're looking at their other opponent and thinking, oh my God, look at the people that have come with this star. All right, this other star made of a chance to me to say, come and run for my country. We've seen that happen before. Portugal, Obikwelu, uh, you know, um, our, our girl in Qatar. And, and they go there and they excel. You know, so it's, uh, it's, 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 we need to do a lot, you know, not just the good people. Even we need to change the psyche of the so-called bad people and the so-called people that are in the system. We need to sit down and just like you said, uh, speak to them, uh, change their psyche, change their thinking, the way of thinking. I think most of this thing has to do with the way our mentality, you know, because People come from Nigeria and come to uh, other countries. And let me pick an example for, for an example. I, I remembered when um, the last time I traveled to Nigeria, same thing, KLM, uh, got to Amsterdam, then from Amsterdam, go on another KLM flight to Nigeria. And I could see the way people behaved orderly. As soon as we were uh, nearing, we were already in Africa. And you could see on the map on the plane, on the well, the sat nav on the plane, you already you saw a, a totally different mentality. And in my mind, I'm thinking, ah, oh, Nigeria, we don't come. You understand? We we were okay. Right from England, from London to Amsterdam, brilliant. Then we're just in here, you know, still in the plane, you know. And then we're just approaching Africa. And then and then when we now go to Nigeria to MMA, oh my God. And I'm thinking, is there something um we is there something that really affects us? I mean, it's is this something that has to do with probably we as a person, we as a people, that we go to other countries, we behave, then we come back to Nigeria and we revert back to normal. I mean, I don't know if you've come across things like that before? I mean, all the time. Um, <laughs> I, I guess we're who we are. I, 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 I love us. I won't, I won't change the way we do things. You know, oh, I guess definitely. That yeah, of course. Yeah. Our mm -hmm. flavor. Um, so I, I, I mean, I don't have a problem with all that. You know, we've, we've got attitude, true. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, you were talking about, I just want to bring you back a bit to when you asked how many people in other federations have the kind of board we do. And that's why the political process is a very important process. Federations now should tie up their constitution and 
if you feel you can. Start talking to people. It's really all about people. And true, um, will people sell their votes? Probably, you know. But if you are smart, you start thinking of what's the way around that. So when you say there's corruption, there's corruption everywhere. Okay, you know what the issue is. So I want to get on the board. And when I get on the board, I want to do this, 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 and this. And you must be very aware that you're going to definitely face challenges. I mean, I have, no, for example, the sports festival is coming up. And definitely it's my domain to organize it. Certainly you have so many sports that uh, states that want to win gold medals. And everybody knows that Chica won't bend. So, <laughs> money. so it's not like I'm a saint, but I just went with me. I just say this is where I stand. You know, there are things I can bend for, but not that, you know. So I'm very clear. Before the elections, I was very clear. I said the president repeated it, Kalila repeated it. Kalila is not a board member. And when I was campaigning and telling people to vote us in, I said, look, there's a cabal in Taekwondo and we're going to break this cabal. Hmm. I didn't mean any words and people were throwing money about. I, I didn't care. I just focused on how to win and we won. And we, we started trying to get the Taekwondo family together. If the cabal wants to come in as a family, that's fine. So, and in the process of trying to bring about change, you find out that it's very difficult because there's a lot of poverty. And also, we're also used to shortcuts. So for example, if you need to pay money to get your YX certificate, you know that if you go in, you are going to fail. And someone says, wow, just give me 10,000. I will sort it out for you. Society now will support it. You're a sharp guy. You know what's up. The harder part is to tell the person, go and read your book. And you have to read it subject by subject. So you take out maths, you see everything, oh, you have integration, you have factorization, you have, and go one by one. What well, it's tough to follow this path. And that's why maybe in sports, doping will always be an issue because it's a shortcut. You want to be stronger, you want to be faster physically, then train for it. If I start training four years before, for the Olympics, and you start training four months before for the Olympics, naturally, I should be faster and stronger. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the natural uh, order of things. So I, I believe that in the same vein, if people want to see change in their various federations, then they should start the action that needs to be taken to get into the federation. And trust me, I, for example, Taekwondo elections is next year. I can guarantee you that so many meetings are being held to make sure that this board might not come back. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I don't think the president cares. I don't think all the good people care. If we want to make a change, if we say we want to come back, we fight for it. You don't say, oh, you did so well, so definitely you should come back. No, that's not how the world works. Mm -hmm. you know? So if you feel you can be the change, you take the message to the people, you look at everybody that makes the decisions, you make sure that you're in touch, you do all those things that need to be done. And this is especially for former athletes because a lot of former athletes, we talk a lot. Oh, if I was there, I would do this. If I was there, I would do this, I would do that. So please be there. There's nothing that says you can't be there. Read the rules and play the game and get in so that you can make a difference, you know? So um, that's it. As for the attitude of Nigerians, man, 
we are Nigerian now, you know. Yeah, that's, the matrix, mm. that's the matrix that makes us excel. Uh, when you go, when you look at Nigerians in the US and the UK or in the Middle East, everywhere we're excelling. If we do good, we excel. If we do bad, we excel, you know. So that's why <laughs> when Nigerians do fraud, they are exceptionally good at it. Exactly. And when they run their businesses, they are exceptionally good at it. If you want to see the real Nigerians, go to the market. You see a lot of honest people, you know, selling their goods, doing honest business, content with the lives they live, you know. So mm -hmm. I do think that Nigerians are good people, but I think that a few bad ones because of how exceptionally well they've uh, they've uh, performed with their acts, you know, they have given us a bad name. Exactly. So, Chica, um, you, you've come from a very well-known uh, family, especially in Nigeria. Um, your dad, um, very eloquent person, uh, politician, and um, really very, very well-known in Nigeria. Um, are we, are we going to see another... Chukumeri in politics pretty soon. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't discuss with my brothers about it. <laughs> uh, but if they want to, why not? Why not? If you feel you can serve. Um, our parents brought us up to be very independent to do what you really want to do. Um, I remember when I was doing Taekwondo, my because my first degree is actually in mechanical engineering. And my master's is in operation supply chain. And my dad would rather have liked me to like go into the field and start up my career. But I said, look, I'll compete and finish my three Olympics. And he supported. So he has always been the whatever you do, just do it to the best of your ability. So um, I'm sure down the road, probably one or two of my brothers, my, I mean, my brother Chuck already contested um, in the House of, in the, in the State House of Assembly. So he, he didn't win on paper, but I, I think that was fine because he enjoyed it, you know? So certainly <clears throat> my dad, uh, he, for me, the best thing he did was to leave a good name, you know, personally, I could see, oh, he was upright, he was this, he was that. We still go along, we meet people, and they are grateful for who he was. But a man's legacy is actually how you raise your children. You know? So when I look at some of my brothers, Chad, my sister, DK, uh, sorry, Azuka, DK, Chaka, Perez, my brothers, I have a clear vision when they say that the family is a unit of the society, you understand? That the duty of a man, a, a, a father or a mother, is to make sure that you build and train uh, children who can contribute positively to society. So would we be in politics? If any of my brothers want to join politics because they love to, then that's fine. But I doubt any of us will join because my dad was a politician. Therefore, I want to continue down that path. But do I enjoy politics? Certainly. I think it's a very important, because it's a discussion, you know. They're trying to make laws that govern society. They're trying to save the people. So I think it's a very noble cause that unfortunately has a very bad name, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll see how that goes with time okay on that note chica we thank you for coming on to this show uh we you know what we we need to bring you back on the show and uh so we can talk <laughs> more about some other things because it's been it's been really interesting talking to you today and um uh definitely we would call you again i hope when we call um you will be there to answer our call well um I have to thank you for having me on your show. I have to thank commend you. you for the uh, innovation. You've embraced technology. 
especially in these COVID times. And I hope you get a lot more people to have this conversation because, you know, we're social beings and people love this kind of conversations. I'm very happy that you had me on your show. And whenever you want me, just let me know. And I'll be Thank you so much, Chika. Thank you. Definitely we'll have you on the show once again. And we'll talk more about this issue. Thank you, Chika, for coming to the show. Uh, it's been wonderful talking to Chika, Chika Mary J. Uh, an uh, Olympian, uh, bronze medalist, um, you know, uh, now a sports ad administrator. Uh, it was brilliant talking to him. Um, it's been it's been wonderful. Um, all he has had to say about sports in Nigeria, especially zeroing in on Taekwondo. Um, very big thank you to Nigerian Calling Federation for all your comments. We'll be reading out those comments in a bit. And for Kaya Deno, K Noel, K Noel. Uh, thank you also for uh, the wonderful comments you've been making. Uh, we will also be reading that uh, in the course of a program. So um, I think, Yomi, if I am right, we've got our second guest on the show. If you just bear with me one second, I think we'll probably have our, um, our, our second guest on the show who is joining us today. Um, uh, that's Ace Brume, uh, who also a uh, three time African senior long jump champion. Um, so, um, right before we go into that, if I could just um, take a bit of the comment from uh, one from the Nigerian Calling Federation. Uh, one of the comments was that the point is uh, that until government removes the science from sport, uh, we cannot attend or attain the multi-billion multi -billion dollar empire we're talking about. So, um, um, so thank you for Nigerian Calling Federation for that comment. Uh, well, Chika, I strongly disagree with that. Doesn't want the government to take his hands off uh, uh, sports at the moment. Um, also, we had uh, K, K that said, we have a deadlock in our system. You see, sports administrators in Nigeria are more of a uh, political compensation. A reward system for good politicking as members of political party. That's a very strong, uh, those are strong words. And I honestly totally believe that because not a lot of, just like as, um, I um, uh, pointed out to Chika at that time, that not a lot of, of, of the associations we have in Nigeria are as innovative as, you know, it's Taekwondo uh, Federation or the Nigerian Calling Federation. Uh, you know, they are not as innovative as uh, the two. So um, we, we we all need to um, you know, try and contribute our quotas to making sure that we have all these, as Chika put it, the good people uh, in the right place, you know, and the good people trying to change the mentality that we have on the ground in Nigeria at the moment, and indeed in Africa. So I think when we all come together. I mean, when we have discussions like this, we try and, as much as possible to educate our people, to educate people that are watching, people that are listening, you know, on changing their mentality. And I think it will go a long way. So um, I think we've got our next uh, guest, Ese uh, Brume. Say hello, if you can hear me. Uh, welcome to The Way Show. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Ese. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How about yourself? I am good, thank you. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Um, it's been wonderful. So, um, has it been like uh, for you, SA? Um, I mean, I know it's COVID, it's probably has put your preparations for the Olympics and so, so many other things. Has it been? Um, I thank God. <laughs> um, so far, things have been going well. well. Uh... Fingers crossed. I just thank God. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. I say you, you, um, about a few months ago, we spoke to your coach, Coach Kayade, and um, he, he had very lovely things to say about you. I mean, um, about how um, you guys started, about how much work he's put in, and obviously you have put in uh, to making yourself what you are today. Um, tell me, um, so what are the plans for the Olympics? I mean, there's not much you can do now, but um, what are we looking forward to uh, regarding the Olympics and you?
Um, so far, um, I'm actually not training well like I'm supposed to. So um, right now, I'm not ready. But um, hopefully, mm. by um, hopefully when it's time, I know I'll be ready by the grace of God. Mm. So um, for now, I can't really say. I'm just like uh, keeping fit, I'll say. So um, I'm just here. I'm not ready. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not ready. <laughs> I, I want to ask you a question. I think I did ask Chica um, this question too. Um, what, when you are in the stadium and you're about to make that jump, okay, and you're thinking okay. um, that, that, that people all around the stadium, you know, chanting your name, people in, uh, in, 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 in Nigeria, in Africa, they're watching the TV, your family, your friends, your well wishes, everyone in Nigeria is shouting, they say, go, go for gold, go for gold. What, what, what comes in your mind that time when you're taking that first step? I mean, do, do you see, I don't know, uh, what do you think of? Um, actually, the only thing that comes to my mind is how to better my, um, myself. And also, um, inside of me, I'm excited that I'm able to praise God with my talent because that's one of the major reasons why I'm doing the sports. And, and also, that's the only thing I really know how to do best right now. And um, I'm excited also. At that point in time, I feel grateful to God that I'm able to use my talent, you know, use my talent for myself and also um, for my country, and uh, also to make people around me excited. So um, I try to like at every point in time, if I, whenever I want to jump, to I try to like improve on myself or my performance. Mm. We have got a, a, a short yeah. video we're just going to see now about some of your jumps. Uh, we just want I just want us to show you. And once we show, once that is done, I'll come back to ask you a, a question on, on, on uh, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll continue with that. So, um, SA, we, we just saw your gold medal jump. I mean, that was, that was, oh my God, that's, that was on another level. You know, it's, um, always, it's always exciting when we see Nigerians excel. And when we saw you do that, we were like, yes, our girl has done it. So, um, that's, that's very brilliant. That's very brilliant for you. So, I mean, Thank you. How, how was the journey like for you getting to that stage? I mean, I know you must, you must have put in, hours and hours and weeks and months how was it for you doing all this training to get to that stage you are at the moment um it wasn't really like an easy one but um god helped me through he helped me through and uh with the help of my coach i was able to like skate through and uh i wouldn't say that i'm the strongest or that I'm the best, but um, I'll say that um, I was consistent and uh, I was uh, determined. So that was what helped helped me. Mm. That was what helped me, yeah. 
So um, I try to like at every point in time um, keep my focus and also uh, believe in my coach and also the process. And these are what kept me going to this moment. Okay. So what, what does it take to be an, an Olympic athlete? I mean, I know in my school I used to run, you know. I always I, I dreamt of <laughs> Olympi an Olympian, but it never worked out for me. And, well, uh, it, it wasn't my part. I tried football, it never worked out for me. But and when I look at people like you and, you know, it, it makes me wonder, you guys are really superhuman. Is that so? I mean, <laughs> This is something I tried it. It never worked out for me, you know, and um, maybe I wasn't really encouraged or maybe I wasn't really serious about it, you know. But when you see people like you go out there and you make Africa proud, not just Nigeria, I mean, it makes you superhuman. So how, what makes an Olympian, what makes a good athlete? Is it just training, training or prayers, prayers? What else makes it? Um, <laughs> it's not really about the training, not mm -hmm. just about the training, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there are some persons, they, they actually work hard uh, than us. But um, for my case, I would say that um, I'm just favored. Mm -hmm. I'm just favored, yeah, by God. Um, I'm not the best. Um, I don't train more than um, every other person or anyone else, but um, because um, I always put, I always commit my um, training and also uh, my uh, career, I'll say, into God's hands. And, uh, um, and also I try to believe in my coach. Mm. And yeah, I try. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Yeah, I try to believe in my coach, trusting him and the process. That's what has actually kept me good and trusting my coach. Mm -hmm. That's what has kept me, not just about the training. Mm -hmm. And your coach did say that because um, he did say, um, if there's one person he sees that would also be not just an Olympic champion and world champion, undisputed. Uh, he says, he's, I think he's a say, because she's really down to earth. She listens, you know, and she's constantly improving ourselves, um, uh, improving herself. So it's, 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 it's something very nice to see about, you know, about your athlete. I mean, when a coach says that. But uh, how has it been, I mean, support from other areas? I mean, as, apart from your coach, do you get support from other areas? Do you get support from the association? from the government do you get support from other private people you know because it takes a lot for you to be at the top uh yeah um i get um support from um okay like after the world championship i actually got like support from delta state they are the only ones who have been supportive of me and also, um, aside my uh, sponsors, which is Adidas, so um, the governor of my state has been the only one who has been supportive, and um, I, I I also got support from um, Honorable Lamide George, and uh, there are some persons they not that they supported me like financially, but. Um, with the advices and all, uh, I got support from um, people like my parents, their prayers, my family, and also um, um, Komodo Nesema, I will never forget. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget him. Yeah, he has been, he really supported me right from when I started. He was, he was one of the persons God used yeah, when I started, and um, I really appreciate him for that. Okay, so are you going to be participating in the next uh, sports festival uh, when, whenever that is? Because we know it should be in the, this year. So are you um, planning to participate in that as part of your yeah, so, Olympics? Yeah. And, yeah. 
Yeah, yes, of course I am. And are you representing Delta State? Yes, I am. Okay, you're, you're not jumping ship yet, no? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, no. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. So, 7.05 7 meters, that's long. You know, that's about, that's about 25 or 27 feet. That's long. I mean, how, how do you do, you know, you should be, you should, I saw one of your pictures on Instagram when you were jumping. I think you were, it felt like you were jumping through a, a story building. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, how did you really start long jump? Did you, did you, did you start it? You start a long jump as, um, as a long jump power, where you are, uh, is um, where you in the sprints before you, 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 you know, decided to move to long jump. So, um, I didn't start with long jump. I started with the four hundred meters uh, <laughs> from high school. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was in two thousand and eight, and I was in high school. And then uh, they came to um, get us in school. That was our uh, uh, um, games master. He came, he picked us, and he took us to the track. That was my first time of seeing the track. And then uh, we competed. I thought it was inter-house sport, like mm -hmm. the normal school competitions here. Yeah. And then I ran the 400. I came second. And my um, games master was like, we are now government properties, that we are not, <laughs> not going home here, <laughs> that we have to... <laughs> that will be camped. And I was like, I didn't tell my parents about this. I can't just, from school, you know, um, uh, I can't just, like, from school be camped in uh, a place where I, my parents, my family, none of them even know my whereabouts or something. And they were like, yes, I could go home, inform them, and then return back. So um, after some days, they did another trial. I came toward in the 400 and they were like, I, I wouldn't be going for, for the competition because they need just two participants for each event. So my friends were like, I should go for the long jump because that's the only event, the only event remaining. So I did went and then I, I won it. That was how I made it to the competition. Wow. <laughs> and since then I've been doing the long jumps. Yeah. Wow. So, um, otherwise, he will have been a 400 meters champion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you still do, you still do uh, 100 meters as, as some events. And I think you've got personal best of just a little over 11, 11 seconds. That's not bad. For, yeah. That's not bad for 100 meters. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, thinking, thinking I mean, you, you, you started as a 400 meters person. Then move into long jump, then you still, um, you know, also doing 11 seconds plus in 100 meters. That's that's really good. So when you, are you going to st still stick to long jump or would you also explore uh, trying yourself in the 100 meters um, when you go to other competitions, especially Commonwealth or, or the Olympic Games? Yeah, I want to try the sprint. Okay. In this season. Yeah, I'll be starting off with the festival. Okay, to see how far you've gone. Yes. Okay, so are we, in a way, are we, are we, are we going to be seeing a, a double champion, uh, long jump and uh, a sprint, 100 meters champion in <laughs> the Olympics at some point? <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, we'll, be the Christ of God. Yeah. we'll be looking forward to that. We'll be looking forward to that. The other thing is, you actually school in Cyprus. You you study in, um, I think you study in tourism and hospitality in Cyprus. Um, yeah. Is that something you're looking to pick on at the end of your career in athletics? You know, down yeah, like, so after, you, after you have been the Olympic and world champion. <laughs> yes, of course. Okay, so tell us so, about why you decided to go for tourism and hospitality. Um, at first, I just chose a course that I knew I'll be able to manage with alongside my career, my sports career. 
and uh, along along the line, I got to love it, mm -hmm. and uh, I really like it, and it's something that I want to um, carry on with when I'm done with my sports career. Yeah, yeah, and I know you're in your school in Cyprus. You are like uh, you are like a super person there because um, I saw the yeah. video of when you came back after winning your uh, medal at Doha, and everyone was like, "Oh, oh, that's our girl, that's our girl." I mean, how was it like for you? I mean, going to uh, school in another match country, and <laughs> <laughs> you are giving the heroes welcome like that. How was it like for you? It was amazing. I didn't expect it. I was really surprised and um, I I felt really loved that day, you know, and um, I really appreciate them because these people, they actually really loved me. Not just because of that performance, the show they put up, but um, because they are willing to support me Mm -hmm. As far as my career is concerned, they are willing to support me. So mm -hmm. I I really appreciate them for the love. I appreciate them for the support. And um, I, I appreciate them for taking me as part of their family. That's good. So we're just going to take another uh, look at another <laughs> video. Then we'll come back and continue the, the interview. Okay. Special thanks to Athletics Africa for that video. Um, I say you saw yourself there doing <laughs> yeah. what um, the impossible because as far as I'm concerned, I think I probably can only do about one meter if I want to jump. <laughs> my my yeah, I could do so probably one meter, <laughs> you know. And you massively doing over six meters that time. I mean, when you are in the stadium and there's so much noise and you hear them saying, you hear the announcer saying, silence, please. Um, do you, and then you hear some people also chatting, I mean, chanting your names. At that point in time, do you actually hear anything or is it just concentration on your goal? Um, I don't really like hear anything. The only thing I hear is like the sharing the clubs the club because it um, helps to push me okay. and uh, I just go for it, you know, I just go for the jump, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and we could see, we could see that concentration in your, you know, in your face that time before, even after the jump, you were still looking and like, you were still like in the spirit, like, yes, what was, <laughs> it, like? was, was it a clean job, was, was it, was it over six? And you know, and you now went to your coach. What was your coach <laughs> telling you that time? Um, he was like, um, I should improve on my speed and especially my last 10 meters. Okay. I think and so then try to finish up my legs. Okay, so that's the key. I mean, for you to be a very successful long jumper, you need to have speed. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. And do you have to be extra tall or, you know, to, to, to push that jump. Because you see some tall jumpers that, you know, obviously jump, but you're not that tall, but you still can manage to jump that high. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's always wonderful when you see people that are able to push, you know, that extra mile, especially when it's, it's something you have done in the past and you obviously didn't make it at all. And you see people jumping that high and it's, it's really, it's really, it's really exciting. So we've got the next uh, Commonwealth Games coming up. 
in Birmingham. And we're hoping to see you there. And we're hoping to see you live there, uh, obviously. Yeah. We'll be, we'll be cheering you on. And uh, um, we'll, be, we'll be there cheering AC to gold medal again. And obviously, <laughs> when, when Japan Olympics finally comes, uh, hopefully we'll also be there cheering you up to, um, to do us proud and do yourself proud, you know, to be another world champion, to be another, another Olympic champion. Uh, um, Shoma Juma has already done it. So it's, it's, it's a time now. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, as, so yeah. As we leave you, Ese, um, you, you are, um, since 2013, um, you were also the, um, first Nigerian woman to win at the IAAF World Championship in Doha. That's a mean feat. So I'm just going to re uh, read what Nigerian Colin Federation says about you. It says, uh, we believe even if you do 200 meters, you can do well. Do you think that's a challenge? Are you, are you thinking probably uh, long jump, 100 meters and probably 200 meters? Have you discussed it with your coach at any point? <laughs> Uh, we've talked about the sprint before, yeah. That's why I had to start um, learning how to sprint. And uh, um, that's why we're thinking of doing it now. <laughs> okay. We, we started We started last year. Okay. We don't want to push you too much. So we see, yeah. see how you go, we see how you go at the, at the, uh, um, at the uh, sports festival. Okay. And uh, of, yeah. of, uh, you do well. And then, then we'll, we'll see what happens after that. Uh, I say we're thankful for having you on the program. Thank you so much for coming. And we can only wish you all the very best. I mean, when you win all those medals, we'll call you again to come up on the show and show us the medals. And, uh, <laughs> and we'll be able to celebrate and obviously talk through it. Okay. Thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All the best to you. Okay. All right, thank and, you. And say hello to Coach Coyote for us, all right? I know he's probably he watching. Coach, Coach, <laughs> watch. Hello, and uh, it was nice having you on the show some time ago. So thank you so much, Ace, for coming in. Uh, we hope to talk to you again soon. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, all right. Yes, bye. So, um, wow. Um, we had, we, we, we all through today was just Olympics. We had uh, Ace, Brume, and uh, Chica. Chukumarije. Exciting talking to these people. I mean, when you see, especially Ace, uh, quite a shy person, uh, when you see on, on on the tracks, I mean, she's just like a lioness, just going for it. I mean, she's totally different when, when you speak to her. And you mean, you, you are very, you, you know all these athletes very, very well. Is Ace always like that, very shy person? Yes, that's true. She's always very shy. She she's very soft spoken as well. So yeah, soft spoken. Yeah, but she's she's yeah. totally different when she's on the track. She's like she's like a tiger. Nice. Yeah, she does. She's very very um um very very nice of her. I mean, for her to turn up on the show, and uh, we can only wish her well. I mean, she she's she's got she's got quite a lot ahead of her. And we believe totally that she will definitely succeed. That gold medal will, will definitely be coming to Nigeria pretty, pretty soon. You know, the Olympic one. And also we had Chika Chikumereje. Very, very interesting fella, that guy. Uh, you know, and I was really inspired by what he, he had to say today. You know, it's been a really good show today. I mean, mm. we actually did one and a half hours. It's, um, yeah, excited. It's the first time we've done this far. But yeah, it felt really like it. I mean, we could actually have Chica for like three hours. He was just yeah. going on and on. He yeah. had so much to say, and you yeah, know, it was really good. And yeah. for me, I think the good part of it was he being an athlete, he's also an administrator now, so mm -hmm. he has the idea of both sides of the coin, you know. Yeah, yeah. He understood what the athletes are going through, hmm. you know, and also is very uh, conversant with his role also. 
as a, as an administrator. So he's in a better position to fix some of the problems there. And, yeah. and I'm glad he mentioned something about having to go there to break the cover, the holding the spot back. And I and, and I'm really impressed that they were able to come on as a board. And and he spoke about their website. They are the only federation that's actually that active. You know, and I'm really impressed. I mean, they send me a newsletter like every week. You know, mm. you, you don't even need, as reporters, you always want this federation to send you information, right? So you don't need to go chasing them for it. So you know what they're doing. You're conversant with their programs and the celebration. And, you, and, and that's just good PR for them. And I'm glad that someone like that could, can do something like that. Um, all the federations don't have that system. Even the Nigeria Olympic Committee, I don't see them having that kind of organized um, wow. it's to put strategy, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, that's great. And I hope the Athletics Federation can, you know, learn from this. Leave from that. Yeah, take a leaf from that and, you know, uh, improve on what they do. Um, it's always hard to get information off them. And, <laughs> and, and some of this federation is like, they think they're doing you a favor by sending you their info, you know, news or programs and results, you know. And journalists shouldn't be chasing you for this. You should be looking for positive reports and PR about your organization in the media. This should be something that you look forward to every week. And this is something you should work towards feeding the media this information. So, so but I'm really impressed with that. And for yeah. they say, I mean, I'm really glad that she came down to participate in this uh, festival because you know as you know that um most big athletes so to speak don't really come to these kind of national festivals it's like um it's not really profitable for them so exactly, but, yeah. but i think our presence there will be very motivating to the young athletes especially the home based sure. athletes who are competing <laughs> saying someone who is a commonwealth champion uh three-time africa champion and also uh, a world uh, medalist as well, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's for me. It's it, it's it's very positive. Hmm. That's good. So um, it's it's it's. I'm it's sorry. Conversation said they're also on all social media. All, all yeah, social media. I, I tell you. I tell you. Um, if if they also do it very well. In it, yeah. If, if there's any federation that's been dynamic, I I, I must say the Nigerian College Federation has been very, very dynamic. I mean, there's hardly any time, I think it was about two weeks or last week, uh, the, the Federation president was also on, on Nigerian media, TV stations, yeah. and, I li and I watched him and it's a very dynamic uh, federation. Thank you, Nigerian College Federation, for constantly supporting us on this program. Uh, every week you're, you're on uh, to encourage us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Kano, for the uh, for the words, for the comments you've made. Um, uh, Deni, uh, Deni thank you so much, uh, even for the thoughts you had about uh, uh, Chika Chikumeri J. And uh, we also had um, uh, who else did we have? Um, and all those stuff made comments on live comments on our show today. We just want to say thank you for the comments you've made and uh, hopefully you continue to support us, you continue to follow us on Instagram, continue to subscribe to our show, continue to watch it, like all um, of the shows on the on Way Show weekly every Sunday at 8 p.m. So uh, I think that's the package for today. Today we had the uh, Olympians coming into the show to say, um, their beat, you know, Chika, Chika, Mary Jane, many thanks for you to, uh, to you for coming on the show again. We would like to we'd like to have you back on the show, talk more on uh, the plans, your plans for the federation and uh, sports in general. And to Ese Brume, thank you so much for coming on the show. Ese, it's been wonderful having you on the show, and we can only wish you all the very best at the Nigeria Sports Festival followed by the uh, Commonwealth Games and indeed the special big one, the Olympics. Like I said, we'll be following you. Uh, we'll be uh, rooting for you. We'll be uh, hoping for you that you bring back those medals uh, that will make Nigeria and indeed Africa proud. 
So it's been our presentation for today. That's the show for today. We wish you a very, very good week ahead. And uh, we do hope uh, you will join us same time, 8 p.m. Uh, on same um, channel. Uh, that's the YouTube Live with me, myself, Wally, and my um, pro producer and co-host, Yomir Omobija. Thank you for today and hope to see you next week.